Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today I'm pretty excited because I have a new cookbook that we're going to start working from and that is called Brown Sugar Kitchen. It is um, from Tanya Holland. She has been on Top Chef. She has her own uh, show on uh, OWN on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Um, and the recipes in this book are recipes that she serves in her restaurant called Brown Sugar Kitchen. And um, they do breakfast, lunch, dinner, all of it, um, dessert, and it's all in this book. So I'm really looking forward to it. I've not been lucky enough to eat there or have, you know, any idea. I did watch her on Top Chef, um, but so I'm, I'm excited about trying a new book. She has uh, sort of some influences from the Louisiana area, um, but she is in Oakland. Her restaurant is in Oakland, California, but it is sort of a soul food, uh, Southern um, inspired sort of cuisine that she serves. So anyway, I'm looking forward to it. And today we are making something that I'm making basically for my husband because it's one of his favorite things um, is sticky buns, especially with pecans, which these have um, optionally we will obviously be including them. Um, so we have to get started making the dough. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start with some milk and quite a bit of butter. And this isn't even all the butter in the recipe, but so I'm gonna put the butter in here and we're gonna have to um, just melt this over medium heat, uh, heat it up a little bit until the butter is melted at which point we then have to let it cool a little bit. So while this is melting, uh, heating up, and then cooling, I'm gonna measure the rest of my ingredients and get everything ready. I have almost everything here, but I have to measure quite a bit of flour, which is not great with my current setup of um, my canisters. So it takes a little while. But so I'm gonna get that going. We're gonna melt this and we'll be right back. So my butter has just finished melting and I checked the temperature just to make sure, just to see where it is. And it is way above where you would want it to be for yeast right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here and let it cool because this is what we do next. So it took forever for this to cool down to 100, under 110. It's only slightly under right now. Um, that's not in here, but my, my bread guy caution me against putting yeast in anything that is above 110, particularly if you're gonna mix it in a mixer. I don't know, I don't do much bread. He does it all for me. Um, he says 80 degrees is what you want your liquid at if you're gonna do bread in the mixer. But she just says, let it cool slightly. I let it cool down to 110 or below. I used a um, cold, wet rag on the bowl while I stirred it well, this stirred it. So we're good now. And so now um, I'm adding sugar. My granulated sugar kind of got a little extra moisture in it, but that's all right, because it will be fine. Um, it's a little, just a little clumpy. And our yeast, which is why I was concerned about the um, temperature here. So I'm gonna add the yeast. And then we are going to, with our yeast attachment, mix it on medium speed until combined. That should be fine. Now we're supposed to let it sit until it's foamy about five minutes. So I'm gonna go put my yeast back in the freezer because I just, I buy it in bulk and keep it in the freezer, which is fine. Just keeps it, makes it last longer. Um, be back in about five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes. It is definitely getting foamy. But while I was waiting, I was rereading the recipe and I realized that I did something wrong. So it's only suppo supposed to heat up half of the milk with the butter um, in the first place. And I was supposed to add the other half at this point. I'm sure it'll be fine, especially since I um, waited until it was pretty cool. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, you can see we've got some foamy yeasty bits here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and it smells like yeast, like bread right now. So we are going to add, continuing with our whisk attachment, we're going to add some eggs that I've just sort of beat up with a fork to break them up. 
We're supposed to add the other half of the milk, but we don't have that. And we have some salt. It's actually quite a bit of salt, but like, let me, yep, I'm not misreading. So, and now we um, mix this on low speed just until that's combined. I think that's good. And now I'm going to switch to the dough hook, my dough hook attachment, and we're gonna do this entirely. Um, all the kneading is gonna happen in here. So we're going to gradually add our flour that I've already pre-measured here and, um, and then beat it. it. Doesn't say what speed, but it'll probably be at least medium after we get everything in there. Beat it for about five minutes until the dough is smooth and elastic. So it's gonna be loud. We'll probably cut most of this out, but we'll see. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start on a low speed while I'm adding the flour. Okay, turn this off for a second. Now that this is pretty well incorporated, um, and made a nice dough ball. Uh, I'm going to turn this up to medium speed and let it go for about five minutes and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be okay. I uh, just wanted to let you know, I don't think I said, but that was just plain all-purpose flour, not bread flour, um, no rising agents or anything, just all-purpose flour. My bread guy says to look for unbleached, unbromated flour we generally buy, uh, King Arthur whatever you like. Okay. My mixer is getting warm. It's going all over the place and it's been a little more than five minutes. I don't know that it is super smooth and elastic, but uh, we're gonna call it good for now. I am gonna transfer, you won't be able to see that from there, but hopefully from there you will. I'm gonna transfer this dough into a lightly greased, a well, lightly greased, well oiled, a large oiled bowl, uh, enough for it to double in size. So I'm gonna get my oil. I'm just using, uh, I'm just using some grapeseed oil cause that is a neutral flavored oil and that's what I usually use for this kind of thing. Um, I'm just gonna spread the oil around with my hands. And then I'm going to scrape this out or pull this out, kind of form it into a ball. And at some point I had three different separate dough balls in there while I was kneading, whatever. It will be fine. Um, and I'm gonna put this in this bowl. I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap and it's gonna go in my, I've got my warming drawer set to proof bread. Uh, temperature, you want just somewhere warm, but not too warm. Um, let's let it sit for about an hour. We'll be back sometime before that to make the sticky bun goo that goes on the bottom of the pan. So we'll see you in a few. My dough has been done for a little while. I turned off my um, warming drawer, so hopefully it's not gonna get too overproofed. Life happens. Um, it is at least doubled in size now, so we're good. But I have two things to make before we can deal with it. First, I have to make the sticky bun goo. So for that, I have my clean uh, bowl. A little wet, not anymore. Um, I have some more unsalted butter. All of the butter in this recipe is unsalted. Just, you know, FYI, if I forgot to say that before. And I have some light brown sugar. Everything's already measured, thankfully. And we have our whisk attachment again. And we are going to beat this together at medium speed until it's light and fluffy. We're basically creaming these together. Also, we need to stop and, and um, sort of scrape the sides at least twice during this time. And she said it'll, says it'll take three to five minutes. So you probably won't see any of that, but I will be stopping to scrape the scrape sides and it'll take about three to five minutes. So we'll let you know what it looks like. I don't think this is gonna get very much lighter or creamier. 
It just seems to be kind of sticking to the sides of the bowl. And I don't have the patience to mess with it any more than this. I think this will be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients here, um, which is some salt. Not a whole lot of salt, but some salt. I like to put things away when I'm done with them so I don't forget if I've used them. Um, we need corn syrup, honey, and water. So I'm gonna go ahead. I like these uh, plunger things to measure corn syrup and honey. So I'm gonna use both of those and make sure I'm getting the right measurement and I am. There we go. Best part about this, it comes right out. And you can sort of scrape it like that. And then one more time for my corn syrup. This is just light corn syrup. And so I put my corn syrup in here. Same thing as the honey, just scrape it off there. And now we just need a little bit of water. So I'm going to there we go. Put that over here, and we're going to um, beat this until combined. So, I'm gonna stop and scrape it down now, just to get all that salt and everything combined. And now it's actually looking sort of light and fluffy. I just feel like there wasn't enough butter to um, sugar there to really get it light and fluffy without anything else. So I'm going to call that good and try to get as much of this off of here as I can. So now all I have to do is spread this on the bottom of a 9 by 13 pan. I've chosen this Pyrex glass dish. Um, she doesn't suggest whether it should be glass or um, Metal doesn't really tell you what kind to use, but this is what I would generally bake this kind of thing in. So that's what I'm gonna use. And just spread it on the bottom. She did not say to butter the, the dish or anything, just spread, spread all of it along the bottom sort of evenly evenly as you can. And all of this is just preparing for the dough to go in here. Um, and we are going to be using pecans. So now we just sort of sprinkle these along the bottom as evenly as we can. And she says whole pecans, which you know, these are halves, which is pretty much what whole means, and a few pieces. Okay, I'm gonna rearrange anything if I feel like it needs it, so that, you know, all of my sticky buns have some of these nuts with them, because it's my favorite part. Okay. I'm gonna put this back here and we're gonna set up to roll out the dough. I did forget one step that we're gonna need also to have some cinnamon sugar to go on the inside of the dough. So um, I'm just going to mix some ground cinnamon into some plain granulated sugar. Um, use the non-wet side here. It's quite a lot of cinnamon, but it's also quite a lot of sugar, so. There we go. And just uh, combine these together as evenly as you can. My sugar is a little bit, like I said, a little bit uh, lumpy. That will be fine. Because it will all sort of melt in the middle of the dough with, again, quite a lot of butter. Um, speaking of, I I'm going to melt some more unsalted butter in the microwave to be ready for us when we need it 
after the dough is all um, shaped. Okay, so now I need to sort of prepare my work surface, have a lightly floured surface, and then I'm going to also need to lightly flour my um, rolling pin. When I get there, my dough is a bit overproofed, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So she says to punch down the dough and pat this on this surface into a rough rectangle. In the end, we're going for a, a rectangle that is approximately, um, oh, it says a large rectangle, about a quarter inch thick. So I guess we get whatever size we get when it's a quarter inch thick. All right. I think we're at about a quarter of an inch. It'll do. And then I'm going to need a knife and a pastry brush. Okay, so I've got this about a quarter of an inch thick and I have a lot of melted butter and a brush. So I'm just going to brush this with melted butter, try to get it all over. I assume I'm supposed to try to use all of it. I do not know for sure but I'm gonna see. I have doused this liberally with butter and I probably still have about half left. So I don't think I need all of that butter. I sprinkle this with the cinnamon sugar. I feel like I don't need to use all of this cinnamon sugar cause it's an awful lot. And maybe cause I didn't put all of the butter on it. I don't know. We'll see, but I think I'm gonna call that good enough. Um, yeah, I'm gonna call that good enough. And now uh, you want the long end facing you and we're going to roll it. I guess if I had um, made it thinner, it would have been slightly more surface area, but whatever. Maybe I would have needed more of it. roll this this way so I can see it because now I need to sort of pinch um, this together so that it doesn't come apart, hopefully. Kind of roll it a little bit just to flatten that out. And now we cut it into 12 pieces. So, cut it in half and then approximately in half again. And then get three pieces out of each of those. And hopefully they'll be relatively even. Good enough. And now we put these cut side up on top of our um, sticky bun goo. I'll throw those pieces in there because why not? Um, now we're gonna cover this with plastic wrap and let it rise for 30 minutes before we bake it. So we'll be back in about half an hour. So these have risen for half an hour and approximately doubled in size. I don't know, but I do have, since I have this extra butter, I thought I would put some on top. Maybe, why not? Um, and my oven is preheated to uh, 350 degrees, not convection, just regular. Um, I figure some extra butter is not gonna hurt this. I would put some of the cinnamon sugar on top, but I don't want it to get 
super brown and crusty, so I'm not gonna do that. But I figure the butter won't hurt. And we're gonna bake these at 350 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. And she says that they should be um, golden brown at that point. So hopefully they will be. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. And I still have some of this butter left over. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. We'll see. My sticky buns have been in the oven for 45 minutes. They are, um, they're definitely golden brown. I'm pretty sure they're done enough. Um, they did try to boil over and I got a little bit of a burny smell about 30 minutes in, I think. So I put a tray in the on the rack underneath it. We'll have to clean my oven a little bit. Um, and they did kind of rise very funky here on the edges. I was, I don't know, was not expecting that. Mine do seem to be a little bit thicker. My layers seem to be a little bit thicker than her. So maybe I should have rolled it out a little bit bigger. We'll see how they turn out. Um, at this point, we have to leave this to cool on this rack for 15 minutes before we turn it over or turn it out onto a platter. I found, I think I own one platter that will fit this. You can use a, a baking sheet as well. That would be just fine. Whatever you have that will fit it and you can turn it over. But we'll do that in about 15 minutes. Now is the moment of truth when I'm supposed to invert this onto here. My platter is a little big, but it's the only one I have that is big enough and vaguely decorative. So this is super fun. I'm going to, there we go. Maybe, Ooh, it's heavy. Well, here goes nothing. Okay, well, well, it could have been worse. It's coming off. Yay. All right, that was not so bad. And so, we'll stop on mine. things here. She says to um, spoon any extra goo that does not come out over the cinnamon buns, the sticky buns. And there you have it. It worked. Oh my goodness. Um, all right. So she says that if you need to make these ahead, you can uh, cover these with um, plastic wrap, cover them tightly, put them in the refrigerator, and then reheat them for about 15 minutes uh, the day you want them. She says they only keep about a day in the refrigerator. I would think they probably keep a little bit longer than that, but you know, I'm no expert. There we go. So I'm going to plate one of these up and take some pictures and then we'll let you know what we think about it. Serve them warm. That goo will probably not be very tasty once it's cold. So uh, I would reheat it in the microwave a little bit if you, you know, if it gets a little too chilly. We'll let you know what we think. On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watched me make sticky buns from Tanya Holland's Brown Sugar Kitchen cookbook. And now I'm, I bake, but not a lot. And I certainly don't do a lot of bread or um, cinnamon buns or anything like that. So there are certainly some things I probably did wrong or could have done better. Um, I think I didn't roll them out quite thin enough. For me, if I were to do this again, I would probably leave them about the same width because um, I don't want the 
I don't want the honey buns or honey buns, sorry, sticky buns to be any taller because then they'd be really out of my, my baking dish. Um, but I think I want the layers to be thinner and be a few more layers and to be able to get all of that butter and sugar in there without feeling like I'm just dumping it on and it's just gonna roll all over the place, right? So I think that would allow rolling it a little bit bigger, maybe even more like a square than a rectangle um, would allow me to get all of the butter and sugar in there. They're a little bit bready because the, the rolls are kind of thick um, but the, the dough is good. Um, it rose nicely. It baked nicely. Uh, this sticky bun mixture, the, the goo, the sticky bun goo is pretty gooey. Um, I was expecting there to be a little bit more of it, but I think that's fine. My husband said they, they taste a little bit like they're healthy because there's not quite enough butter and sugar in the middle. I think this makes up for it though. Um, they did take a while. They took um, a little longer than I was expecting to make um, with all of the waiting mostly. Uh, waiting for the milk to cool down. May have been my fault, heating it too hot. I don't know, some of my butter was frozen so everything else might've gotten a little bit too warm. Um, waiting for it to rise twice. Um, but really it wasn't too bad. You would want a mixer, a stand mixer with this because it does call for that for the kneading. And I hate to knead bread dough by hand. I just really do. I don't feel like I'm good at it. Um, I never know when it's done. So if a recipe tells me knead it or put it in the machine for a certain amount of time, that's great with me. Um, and it did, it turned out well. Uh, the bread dough, the bread part, seems perfect to me, so that's good. Um, but yeah, we are going to enjoy these, but we are also going to share them because this is a lot to eat <laughs> in a relatively short amount of time. Um, so, uh, if you enjoyed watching me make this, please give me a thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe button, uh, share it with your friends if you think they would enjoy this, and uh, come back and watch me make something else next week.